Hi, Bernard. Hi, uh, Carsten. How are you? So the previous tests were easy peasy. Now we do the real thing, right? Which is the, the testing, yeah. uh, testing a lot of virtual machines and press pressing the last bit out of our storage system, out of your storage system. Yes, that's true. And uh, okay, so let's let's um, we we will create a VM fleet. VM fleet mm -hmm. is a nice. It was PowerShell scripts uh, for a long while, and now it's mm. the new VM fleet is a PowerShell module, um, mm -hmm. and we will go through the installation. So mm -hmm. we have two, re three requirements, right? We need a, a VHDX uh, mm -hmm. with an installed Windows server in it. We will do that mm -hmm. now, and then we need the PowerShell module, and we need a test tool. This has mm -hmm. been so I start with the uh, with the virtual machine. I usually mm -hmm. okay. call it VM fleet template, so that I know this is not a real virtual machine. It's just to get mm -hmm. our um, VHDX with an installed Windows Server in it. I do a generation two VM. Mm -hmm. The memory is really not important because it will set up its own memory sizes. We don't need any network because mm -hmm. it doesn't have it's to have a connection. Yeah. That will be done by VM fleet itself. Mm -hmm. And then I create not a 100, 127 uh, gigabyte mm -hmm. uh, big um, VHDX. Even it is dynamic, so it will only occupy the space on the underlying storage system, the, uh, how many bytes I copy in. So usually, mm -hmm. let's say 10, 15. But when VM fleet starts, it blows up the uh, yep. the templates to the maximum size. And uh, yeah. we create a lot of VMs, and we have to copy always this 127. So I go with mm -hmm. 25. That's okay. enough for a Windows Core installation and a 10 gigabyte test file. So, mm -hmm. and I choose from cluster storage, collect images. I choose the server eval, that's the newest Windows Server okay. 22 data center eval mm -hmm. image. So, and then I connect to the machine and I start it. Mm -hmm. I could add I could add another processor, but it's fast enough to install. You can do that. Yeah. You don't need to. So I go with an English and a German. And, keyboard. Yeah, but I yeah. I don't really uh, have to go to uh, into the machine. So we could also yeah. uh, go with an American keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. And in order to save some time, I think you will use a headless system, right? Which only yeah. is. Uh, yeah, it, ha it, has a, it has a small head. It's not completely headless, but it's mm -hmm. a, it has a small head, right? A core mm -hmm. installation. Mm -hmm. We don't need the GUI here. Yep. It will only, you know, perform the load. Um, and we, we don't look at the individual box anyway. So we want it just to produce some load. And that's basically good. OK. So then w once this is finished, uh, I assume you shut it down and you park it aside, and then um, we do other stuff with it. Um, exactly. But first, we have yeah. to do a one time login. So we have mm -hmm. to set the local administrator password. Okay. Uh, we need that yeah. later uh, in the deployment. Um, mm -hmm. So imagine in the last installation I've done, I, I there was a goal to reach a certain number of IOs per second mm -hmm. with bit lockered volume. So the customer mm -hmm. had the demand to reach a certain amount. And I will not tell you the amount, but uh, because we want to surprise our, our, our viewers a bit what is possible with VM fleet, or at least mm -hmm. I want that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I deployed 75 benchmark VMs per node. And mm -hmm. it was a six node cluster. So 75 times six is 450 VMs. Mm -hmm. And that's easily done with VM fleet. It takes, let's say, two hours, but then you have 450 VMs running and can play mm -hmm. with them. And the nice thing with VM fleet is also we can use it to really test out the performance that is possible with our cluster. So the edge scenario, but we can mm -hmm. also tell the VMs, oh, only do 100 IOPS per VM. So, yep, so we get a, 
Right. Yeah, we get a ground load and we can play around with a cluster. Usually mm. if you set up a cluster, you maybe install two, three, four VMs and then play around. But that's not really a four node Real cluster. Life, you don't right. buy a four yeah. node cluster for four VMs. Maybe if, if there would be large SQL servers, but usually you have 40, 50, 100 mm. VMs running there. And when you want to emulate the behavior of that, you need some plenty VMs yeah? mm -hmm. and you can do that too with VM fleet. So I don't use the um, enhanced uh, session mode. Yeah? Yep. I just go in here and set the password. Mm -hmm. And for the password, um, I think if we look at the host, I use these, this password and I will use it in the virtual machine also. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. So it's um, not required, but it's just for yeah. Let me see the reason. password again. A set yeah. HCI videos forty two. <laughs> so H set HCI videos forty two. Uh, that's mm -hmm. because the forty two is the number of the videos, right? H set HCI <laughs> videos forty two. The answer okay. to all questions. Yeah. So um, we log mm -hmm. in one time so that the mm -hmm. uh, profile is generated uh, and then we shut down uh, the machine without mm -hmm. doing no a system. System. Yeah. Okay. So just mm -hmm. log in once. We don't have to patch the machine. We now okay. just need it as a stupid, uh, so shut down, as a stupid uh, template for our virtual machine. Mm -hmm. So we have that okay. now. Yep. The, the next part is to download disk speed, for example, or? No, well, you don't need to do it any longer because uh, VM fleet was enhanced, so it will download disk speed um, as well. So yeah. don't, don't bother with it. Um, so you see, I'm a little bit unsure how to proceed because I have done maybe thousands of uh, tests with the old VM fleet scripting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of PowerShell scripts and they are still available if you uh, download uh, the disk speed mm -hmm. source code from GitHub. It's a sub project of the disk SPD testing mm -hmm. tool, but there is a new one and an enhanced one. And Bernard yeah. played around with a new one, uh, new one a lot. And we will, of course, use the new one. On not the old yep. one. So I have so my the, cheat sheet here, right? Yeah. Yeah. We so inst install module is is the name for PowerShell to go out to reach to the PowerShell gallery and to get uh, resources from there. You might need to trust the PowerShell gallery before. Uh, that's really? what the that's I what really have the, to the trust it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, beware that not only Microsoft guys are uploading their code to that repository, but others could do as well. So be sure that what you're downloading is the right thing. So um, have you installed it that, uh, already? I mean, yeah, that's, let's see. I've, if that I've works. said the install module. We can do it again. It shouldn't hurt. No, no, no. Right? Yeah, I think it, it will not. It will not hurt, right? If we okay, install it again. See. Or do you think it will explode? No, it's no, bad. no, no, no. Okay, that was quick. I mean, didn't um, didn't look yeah. watch that out. Okay, so now that you have installed it, now you have imported it. You could do a get module to see it loaded, but the most obvious would be to do a get module and then VM fleet for getting all the commands uh, yeah, that uh, this available. module brings. Right? Yeah, there are plenty, right? Mm -hmm. And in the old VM fleet, we had. Uh, uh, um, yeah. ap apparently a script for every module. So yeah. this is much nicer. So before you do the next step, like install fleet, right? That would require you to set up the cluster shared volumes, but you did it already. You have a collect yes. volume, you have, yes. you know, for every node, you have a volume that it's named as the node, right? Um, that's, you know, one requirement that you would have. Um, yeah, you see but it if here? You have, yes. So, yeah. so we have to have a collect volume right. that's hard coded. And then we have mm -hmm. to have a yep. volume for every host in our cluster. And we did that and already. You, so we mm, don't have you, to do something yet. Yeah. And you may have a look at the collect volume just to see you know, the contents of it because it will change afterwards uh, after yeah. we did the uh, installation 
Um, I, yeah, I, I might to use... look into it. Yeah, <laughs> use yeah. this one. You're right. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's already late. Um, yeah, um, all good. So be aware that there will be some further uh, some further content there. You may leave it open and run the other command, I the last one. Yeah. And it will be uh, at least the other scripts did a um, mm. control directory with some subdirectories. And, same and I assume it will be the same. Yeah. So same. we do this, install yep. VM fleet, mm -hmm. put it here. And verbose is always good because it tells us some. So see, there things. is the option for downloading disk speed. Oh, that's nice. So we and, don't um, have to do it separately. It, it does it itself. And if you go back to the, your folder now, it should contain the stuff, right? So you see the control directory, the result, oh. the tools, and the flag. Yeah. So that's the. Yeah, that is VM different now. Um, yeah. In control, there were some scripts, uh, and then we had flag, result, and mm. tools in the control directory. Mm, okay. But now it's at the same level, but that's okay. okay. So in tools did it all already install disk speed in tools yes it did so that's uh, usually something okay. you if you do it the first time you maybe forget to copy uh, the benchmarking mm. tool disk spd to the tools for, uh, directory and here it's done for you so this is already an improvement one step you can't mm -hmm. uh, mess up okay okay Next thing is we don't have our VMs yet, but that would be the next command, right? So you have the template, but now we need to create the big bunch of uh, virtual machines. And there's also yep. a command for that in right. the module that we've just downloaded. And Carson is typing it in, which is, no, it's called new fleet. It's not VM uh. fleet. Sometimes the naming is a little bit, yeah, but... Um, Okay. And then you would need to type in the base VHD file for the template that you have chosen or created. I think, yeah, you have uploaded it to, yeah, there. I know the path by heart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The next one is how many VMs we want to deploy on every node. And mm -hmm. there will be plenty, but uh, there's one trick uh, because we have to give it uh, two pairs of credentials mm -hmm. and you can mistype the credentials. And mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's say we want to do 25 VMs. Mm -hmm. So if we start it now with 25 VMs, we wait maybe 45 minutes to an hour or so. 30 mm -hmm. minutes and mm -hmm. then we start them and we see errors because they mm -hmm. can't log in so i do first one vm per host and if yeah. that one vm works i say okay now do 25 and it's so clever that it sees oh we have already one deployed we we uh, don't have to deploy the one again we start with a second and so on yeah so yeah, and you know one. i learned that session from and a famous, uh, famous uh, VM fleet fan. So uh, I do that by myself <laughs> for okay. exactly the same reason. So yeah. the admin password now is the password of the administrator in the template. So we yeah. we used administrator and this password A Z H C E V D O S forty two. Yep. Yeah, and we That's have it. to type it in clear text. The uh -huh. next one would be. The admin, uh, I think you can leave it out, but I, I do it. Admin, yes. Administrator. Right. Maybe it's safer to leave it out, so it mm. <laughs> will do it correctly. The next one is the connect, connect password. And this has to be a local administrator account on the node. So you have to have the same local administrator account on every node in your cluster, and it has to have the same password. So if you mm -hmm. use something like, it's, I think it's called LAPS or something like that, where you have a different strong password uh, on every node, you can't do that. You have to uh, set the same password. And unfortunately, it's also clear text here, and it's mm -hmm. the same. Then before you saw me in the uh -huh. virtual in this different machine, I set this password, and I hope it works. Yep. And the last thing is the local um, administrator account. So where was it's it? The Oops, connect no. user. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. So it's also administrator, but this is a local administrator mm -hmm. on the hosts. Yeah. Yep. So now fingers so, crossed. Yep. <laughs> let's deploy one VM. Oh, oh let's. No. Yes. Um, and uh, 
things that can go wrong here. Um, and that's, I think, still the case with that version of VM Fleet. If you have complex passwords with special characters, right? So, huge strings with yeah. underscores, exclamation marks, semicolons, and whatnot, yeah. it might break because it has, I, I don't think it is properly escaped in the code. So sometimes mm -hmm. the passwords crack the tool and therefore, you know, in order to get it working, you might temporarily use a different password, too simple password, right? Yeah. Um, but only temporary. Okay. Yeah. You see something here, it creates an internal VM mm -hmm. switch on every host and uh, the VMs later, you, you can you can tell the VMs what they have to do and you mm -hmm. can change, uh, for example, a script and the VMs will notice that and immediately uh, load the new script and do what's in the script. And for that, every VM needs a way to get to these changes. So uh, they choose it very clever. They create an internal switch. An internal switch is a Hyper-V switch where only VMs on the same host that are connected to the internal switch and the host itself. The host itself mm -hmm. has also an internal adapter. We can do mm -hmm. this here, get net adapter. And you see our adapters, and here you see another virtual adapter. So this is mm -hmm. a, a virtual adapter on the fleet internal script. And this adapter can communicate with the VMs that are also connected to this internal switch. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the VMs uh, don't uh, they, they they don't have uh, fixed IP addresses, so they uh, they uh, try to reach a DHCP server. But we don't have a DHCP server on this internal switch. So what does a VM do if it can't get a DHCP address from a from a server? It it uses an IP per address. Because, so it's yes. one six nine two mm. two five four, and then uh, for the last two octets a random a random number. So mm. the trick here is that every host has the same IP config, has the same IP address on this fleet internal, on this virtual adapter. And it is the 169.254.1.1. The VMs get a similar address in the same network. It's a class B network. And then mm. they can communicate with the host. And then they can use this administrator account to go to the C. Uh, C dollar uh, share. It's an administrative share, and it it can reach every data on on the mm -hmm. uh, on the host, and also cluster uh, the cluster storage uh, yeah. collect control directory. Unfortunately, this is the same address. If you have Dell servers, the IDRAC. If you enable the communication from your host to the IDRAC system, there's a virtual adapter. The IDRAC has the same address. So and you get a virtual adapter with a with a 1.2. So if your IDRAC is enabled or the virtual adapter, you can't do VM fleet. So you have to disable the virtual adapter, the IDRAC adapter, on the host to use VM fleet. If you've yeah. done your tests, you can enable it again, and you can uh, your host can communicate with the IDRAC uh, with with a system, but uh, you can't do both at the same time. So this is a little bit of a tip, because a lot of implementations yeah. are Dell based, and maybe there are other BMCs that have the same problem. Yeah, might okay. be yes. Um, and your cluster might you might you see that the cluster uh, network you know showing up, and the cluster might you know be complaining a little bit about it but you know um as long as it is for the test um i could you live with it right it there okay so but anyways see. okay mm -hmm. yeah um let's you know start one and see if if it should or if it behaves as it should right yeah, uh, because now the it should boot up um it should automatically you know get into or log on automatically with the credentials that um Karsten has provided when setting up the uh, vm fleet yeah this already and, went through uh, and that's how it should look like right so it tries to connect to the network to the master node and then it waits it yeah this is it, nicer mm. with this one in the mm. in the last one you saw some some tries and then you saw red mm. 
pause in force and then you get dots for every yep. i don't know 30 seconds and yep. be aware the red paused is mm. good here so it's not an yeah. error uh, the developer has a weird understanding of coloring i would say because red is usually mm. a fault but here red is good it can read the file and you see it here we have an smb mapping the mm. the uh, the drive l is mapped to uh, the the local uh, the hardware server where the vm is running on yep. c drive cluster storage collect and it sees there is a test file and everything is fine we are in pause does, mode it, yeah 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 so and it does it, not it only wait. yeah it, it's yeah. waiting and it, that's what we want to see right so and the good thing is i mean it doesn't only take a job from there it only it also reports back what it is uh what its results are right so it's mm -hmm. uh, uh and there's one thing um or yeah. maybe we can do that later on right so if you go back to your powershell uh command line an interesting thing because sometimes you know you want to check the state of your virtual machines if they are up and running you could you could query them so you could go for get fleet vm with a minus control oh, wait. message yeah, get right. fleet, fleet computer i think it was sort of or vm i'm not quite sure no uh, then it is vm version vm yep. yeah and, and then, then a control message yeah control response sorry uh it was a control response and then it will query out all the vms right so if you go to a pipe it to a table uh that's better not a list like of uh, ft yes and then you would see um hey uh, one is up and running and the other is offline or maybe you know the the communication is going wrong um if that happens, sometimes you can do a repair fleet VM and then it will maybe try to reinitiate the network connection or restart them and um, and set up the communication again. So that's uh, sometimes a useful check, right? Because if you want to do load testing, you want to make sure that the load is can be generated by the virtual machines that are up and running. If you only have five, then it's not a fun, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, so I I will finish up now. I will mm -hmm. deploy 25 VMs on each node. So we will have 100 VMs, test VMs. And I think that's good to go there. Mm -hmm. um, of course, your volumes that you create has uh, have to have the space <laughs> to fit them. So we have 25 gigabyte per VM plus a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and 25 times 25 should be, uh, I think we could deploy 40. 40 times 25 is roughly a terabyte. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's go overboard. We will start with the next video when the deployment is done. And then we play around with uh, we am fleet, right? Okay, so this cool. is going to be a late night video. Maybe the light will be darker. Um, no, or, I well, think we it see. will be on another okay. day. <laughs> <laughs> one, one more thing. I mean, um, you know, once these ones are created, it will create 35 on every node. Mm -hmm. And the idea is also, you know, the disk that belongs to the virtual machine will also be, you know, on that node. How do mm -hmm. we do that, or how does VMfleet do it? Well, there is a cluster shared volume that is owned by the node, um, and then um, you know it will. The, you could see it also from the naming. Mm -hmm. However, you could also, and it would be tested automatically, right? So that the virtual machine that is destined for node number one will start on node number one. Yeah. However, you could have you know, in a normal life on an on an HCI system, it's not always aligned, right? So you would probably see that the virtual machines are being laying around. The disk is belonging to a diff different server then, and um, and there's a, also a command for simulating that kind of workload yeah. pattern and so forth. Yeah. Um, uh, but before our viewers get the mm. wrong impression, you don't yeah. have to align the CSV to yeah, the no. host where the VM is running. I think they overdo it here. And mm. in fact, if you, we can do that later when we play yep. around, we can move VMs to another host and disalign it and there is not really an effect and yeah. i even saw in 
in real life, even mm. it's getting a bit faster if CVMs are running on a different yeah. volume, yep. uh, not mm. on the owner. But here mm. it's very aligned. So you see here, I, yeah. I I I went into the properties of the cluster role of this the first VM on the second node, and you see the M fleet even says the preferred owner for the mm. VM is the host with the same name. So yeah. when the cluster is able, it will start the VM on the node on the preferred owner. It can run on others, but mm -hmm. it will try to start it here. So uh, very, very uh, tightly programmed. So they try to do everything right. But in my experience, that's not really necessary. Yeah, and it, right? I mean, remember the tool is old. It was, a, this was maybe a good practice years ago before uh, S2D or with different storage uh, layout, right? Uh, whereas right now, I mean, the interesting thing is that you shouldn't see a difference, right? Um, exactly. Even if you're we can, we can look moving. At that. Yeah. So, okay, so that uh, will take a, a while, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, look, um, it, it already saw there were the first mm -hmm. VMs were already deployed, so it jumps over it. I, li I like that because mm -hmm. you can start with 10 VMs, so with one, then go to 10. Yep. If that's not enough load, you go to 15 to 20. You can top it up and it mm -hmm. will only deploy the new VMs, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, we are done in this video and we we will see each other, I think, on another day uh, with playing around with VMfleet. And this will maybe also not only one part. We will see. Mm -hmm. See you guys. See you on the next one. Bye.